Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf. On Wednesday, like I said, public service announcement, I repeat it again, I will, I switch back to my original uploading schedule, meaning I upload Sundays and Wednesdays. So no videos anymore on Friday. Like you care, <laughs> but I thought I'd mention it again. Anyway, so from the title of this video, you might wonder <laughs> what you will get, but this is still a booktube channel. So if I talk about the top dudes, then I mean uh, books by male authors that I really enjoyed in 2021. As you know, if you're new to my channel, the channel is called Second Shelf, not for nothing. I talk exclusively about books by female authors. Sometimes, very, very, very rarely, I make an exception for some reason. But normally this channel, I started this channel in order to promote books by female authors because women are still less read, they are less included in the canon, they are less reviewed, they are less translated. So I'm a first of all a woman myself but also a writer and I wanted to use this opportunity to promote my fellow female authors. Anyway, but sometimes people ask me, why don't you read men? I do read men. <laughs> I just don't talk about them on the channel. And to be fair, I don't read as many books by male authors um, as I do read books by female authors, at least not now. But if I look at the my lifetime reading, it's probably not even 50-50 yet still more, I still read more books by men than I read books by women, because in the first maybe 30 years or even more uh, of my reading life, I read maybe 80% male authors, you know, like the books that you get, they, they were, that's were all male authors, all the German classics that I read from uh, Thomas Mann and uh, Hebel and w what have you, all guys, Goethe, Schiller, you know. Anyway, that was just a preliminary, but I do read men, but not as many. It's about between 10 and 20% of my reading a year. Uh, but they are good books and I thought for the tops uh, and flops of 2021 I will make a video about the top dudes. So top three because in the previous video that I uploaded last Sunday I had the top non-fiction and the top uh, fiction reads and there were always also three. So I picked three books by male authors that I really liked and it's fiction and non-fiction combined. Without further ado, after three minutes of preliminary remarks, the first book by uh, a male author I read that I thought was brilliant is this one. A Canadian author, Kerry Fagan, uh, The Student, published in uh, 2019. I got this book from Sean, the book maniac, who happens to be Canadian. I have to say, uh, I talked... Um, to a couple of people uh, who, and I mentioned the book, and then they couldn't get it. Even though it's a relatively new release, 2019, I think one of um, them even got in touch with the author and they had a book sent. It, I mean, it's available in Canada, I would presume, uh, but it, it might be difficult for you to get it, and I don't think there is an ebook uh, out. But anyway. Canadian author, born 1957, and he writes children's uh, books as well, but this is not a children's book. It's about a woman, Miriam, the student, and it's a slim little volume, a novel starting in, 19, in the late 1950s and going up to 2005-ish. Uh, in 1957, Miriam is a young student and she has all kinds of plans and ambitions, but you know, it's the 50s. So for a woman, there were restrictions. And then we get her whole life, um, even though it is a short book, but we get what uh, she experienced after being a student and how her life developed and what became of her plans and her ambitions. 
I thought it was one of the best books written by a male author about a woman, exclusively about a woman, that I've read in a long, long time. Um, it's the character is so lively and so um, relatable, uh, even though she does stuff that I would say, well, Miriam, what the bloody. Yeah, but it's it's a really, really a good book. And if you can get uh, your hands on it, I can certainly highly recommend it. The second top dude or book by a male author um, is nonfiction. And it's one of the exceptions that I made because I did actually mention this book on my channel because it is about a woman, but it's still written by a man. And that is Codebreaker uh, by Walter Isaacson. Uh, this book was published in the spring last uh, of last year, I think in March 2021. Uh, Walter Isaacson is an American uh, author, historian by trade. He's a professor of um, history in, I think, Tulane University. Um, but he also writes books, biographies. He wrote a book about Einstein. He wrote a book about Steve Jobs. And he wrote a book about the Codebreaker. And if you look at the subtitle, it's about Jennifer Doudna, gene editing and the future of the human race. And Jean Doudna, of course, uh, sorry, Jean, Jennifer Doudna, of course, is the American scientist, uh, chemist, I think you would call her, um, who won the Nobel Prize for uh, chemistry two years ago, together with her French colleague, Emmanuel uh, Charpentier. And they got the prize for exactly this, the, the code breaking. So what this book is about, it follows Jennifer Doudna from her youth into her science career and especially focusing on CRISPR. And CRISPR is a means, I'm not going to go into details if you Either you're interested in that book or you don't want to hear about CRISPR, um, but it's a means of gene editing. So cutting uh, a gene at a certain uh, place, exactly the right place, and then inserting or changing something so that you can actually edit the gene. Um, this is a, a riveting story. Um, the research uh, must have taken years. Uh, the, the, the way you learn something about the science. So it is also explaining what CRISPR is and what it does and what gene editing means. But it's also about the scientists involved in this research and the competitions between them uh, leading up to the Nobel Prize, but even before how you get your own lab, uh, the difficulties that Jennifer Doudna faced because she is a woman in a field that is dominated by men still in the 21st century. So it's, it's really engaging um, if you're interested in this type of biography, a living person, first of all, but also science heavy. Um, it's a fantastic book. And it also includes, uh, because the book was published in 2021, so Corona hit already 2020, when I assume Walter Isaacson was in the last uh, you know, the last phase of writing the book, but he included uh, Corona and the research um, uh, surrounding Corona and how this specific scientific field, the CRISPR slash gene editing slash, see what I did there? Uh, how that also impacted um, the research into Corona and especially the development of the vaccines. So, Yes, for all your uh, all the science nerds out there who are interested in you know uh, uh, genes, gene editing, highly recommend. It's a quite a chunker, but it reads like you know your best thriller suspense book, and it's not boring at all. And the last top dude um, uh, in, in my top three reads of books by male authors. And again, there is no, you know, uh, bronze, silver, gold medal. It's just the three, in my view, best books that I've read by, female, by male authors. So it's not a, a ranking. Anyway, the last one is Translated Fiction uh, by a Korean author. Uh, let me hold it this. 
Kim Yong Ha, Diary of a Murderer, translated from the Korean by Chris Lee. Uh, published in Korea, um, Republic of Korea, I should say, uh, in 2013, and the English translation in 2019. It's a um, crime, and it's a collection of short stories, four short stories, but it's also not very, it's a slim volume. Um, and the first, the title story, Diary of a Murderer, is the longest. It's almost novella length, almost 100 pages. And then you have three stories that are obviously shorter um, and especially the title story diary of a murderer I thought was brilliant um, it's about your your the, the diary of a murderer so the confessions of a murderer and it opens with uh, the main protagonist the murderer telling you well I haven't killed anybody in 26 years or something um, and then it's about his life and about uh, not so much why he killed, um, but who. And it's the, your typical very, very, very unreliable narrator for various reasons. I would, I'm not going to go into because that will spoil. Um, and I thought it was brilliant. It was suspenseful but different because it's not about who done it or something. It's more the and the rest of the stories are s sort of similar. It's more about the mindset of somebody, you know, who is a criminal, a murderer, and revealing, still it's about revelations, about what happened. Um, and it has so incredibly intelligent twists and turns that I felt, even though it's only just 100 pages, it really kept me thinking, uh, oh, and how did that work? And I, yeah, and I, I, I have never heard of this author before. It was a, a pick for my in real life book club by one of uh, the participants, and it it was brilliant. I thought so. If you're interested in crime fiction, highly recommend. Anyway, these were my top three dudes books by male authors that I really enjoyed in 2021. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. As always, I'm looking forward to your comments just as in 2021, and I will see you all soon in the next one.